It is time now to check in with Paul Feinbaum, presented by Allstate. And Paul, I mean, have you ever, ever, ever seen anything like it, what we've seen the last 14 weeks in college football? No, I, mean, I thought you were going to say the last t- two days, Matt. I mean, if you just think about uh, where Georgia was at one point, uh, Southern Cal uh, tying Notre Dame, Miami, Syracuse, uh, that did happen. Clemson, which did happen. Uh, we, we almost had even more. Um, and it, it is stupefying. And, and, and I'm, I was trying to figure out the playoffs right now. I'm, I'm completely lost. I mean, I'm hearing people value wins over Duke and Wake Forest as big wins now. I mean, it, it, this, is, this is what we have with the 12-team playoff. Yeah, and you know what? For the crowd, there's, there's always that crowd – you know, I was one of those like, well, expansion. I like the four teams. What is it going to do the regular season? Well, we can check it off the list. It's made the regular season better than we ever thought possible in college football. Now, can you sit here and tell me, though, that there are 12 teams that belong playing for a national championship? Because this is, I mean, there's one undefeated team that's working. The rest of them have losses and blemishes. So you can either say, well, this is the perfect year for the 12-team college football playoff, or I told you so, there aren't 12 teams that should be playing for a national championship. No, there really aren't. But what, what the, the, to me, the biggest surprise is, is we worried about conference championship games. Would they matter anymore? And we're sitting around uh, in shock at some of these games that are coming up and the possibility. So, yeah, they do matter. Uh, the SEC game doesn't, uh, you know, hold uh, significance like it has in the past, like last year. But mm-hmm. look at the ACC, the Big Twelve. Across, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's. I mean, Clemson has the worst loss of the season, and they're one week away from being in the playoffs. It's yeah, really I mean, it it really is. We'll unpack a lot of this stuff because there there are things that you look at and you're like, how did this happen? Here's the one I want to start with, though, because we talk about this a lot. We we have relationships with coaches. Um, we talked to a lot of people around the coaching circle and the one that to me of all the things I've seen this year, to me, the most stunning and inexcusable outcome of the season happened in the noon window in Columbus against Ohio state and Michigan, where the Buckeyes were three touchdown favorites against a Michigan team that lost everyone in the NFL. They have no quarterback to speak of. They have a, a rookie head coach that didn't have any experience. I mean, for Ryan Day to lose that one to me was the most stunning outcome of any game I've seen so far this season. Yeah, because it was probably the game we talked about going into the season. And we were almost joking, Matt, saying, you know, there's a path for Ryan Day to get fired, to lose to Michigan and then not win the national championship. Um, and here we are. And you almost are uh, reminds me a little bit of a couple of years ago when you wanted to write Ohio State off, but you can't. And and, and I mean, I, I don't really know how to how to characterize that. I mean, it's one thing to take a game lightly. Uh, remember, a couple of years ago, Georgia had a path. To, uh, Georgia was already uh, in the playoffs. They lost to Alabama they, they, uh, in the SEC game and they came back and beat them. Two years, uh, two weeks later, three weeks later, in the in, in the national championship, this is different. Yeah, uh, this is the biggest game of the year in college football, and they still can't figure out how to win it. Uh, and, and then, uh, and, and this is a whole other special show we'll do on planting the flag. But you know, Ryan Day comes up with just this idiotic statement about well, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to let them do that to our field. How, try to beat them first, okay, Ryan? You won't have to worry about that. Yeah, that was. The, the back and forth after that game, and I, I sit next to Joey Galloway, and I have, and he's been a good friend of mine for years, and he's sitting there. He's almost laughing at the absurdity of everything going on because you bring in, mind you, you bring in Will Howard because you think he's going to be your answer at quarterback. Well, the guy you chased out, Kyle McCord, pulls off the upset against Miami, throws for 350 yards and three touchdowns. And you watch that game yesterday, and it's like, how did Ohio State get to the point where they have the most talented roster in college football and were arguing about letting teams plant the flag at midfield when you had four quarters to ram the flag right up there if you wanted it to? No, no they mean, and again, it happened all day long and all night because these guys watch other games. But that's the one that gets me. Uh, if you're Ryan Day, keep your mouth shut. Uh, <laughs> I, I – I mean, his path is so interesting. He's got to let's remind the audience. He's got a brand new athletic director. Uh, this is the same guy who fired Jimbo Fisher. 
uh, yeah. two years ago uh, in Ross Bjork. And I, and I don't know. I mean, I don't think you can evaluate Ryan Day until it's all over this year, whenever they walk off the field for the final time. Uh, but they better not lose in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, here's an interesting dynamic, Paul, and we really haven't gotten in this, into this too much, but I think Ryan Day is probably going to be the ultimate test case. How many jobs will a college football playoff ultimately save in its 12-team inception and moving forward? Because you can't sit here and be like, Ryan Day, you're out. Chip Kelly, you're you in. Can't. One, because Chip Kelly wants nothing to do with being a head coach. Two, Ohio State's going to make the playoff. You know what that means? They have a chance to play for the national championship and at any given point to the most talented team in the country. Yeah. Uh, three, three years ago, I think, yeah, I think it was three years ago, they lost to Michigan and came right back in the semifinals and had a two touchdown lead over Georgia in the fourth yep. quarter. They would have won, uh, I think that was the TCU year. Uh, they, that was two years. They, they would have won the national championship. So you can't, you know, the old columnist, me, columnist in me wants to just write the column fire the code you can't do it right um you cannot do anything and, and but you have to watch it and then you have to decide uh where you're going to go and and if he wins i mean it would both it would be, by the way if i i can believe they'll win the night i mean they may win the national championship uh just because they took off the biggest day of the year in college football doesn't mean they can't come back they very well could because like i said to start the show there's so much parody in college football, which gets me to this next point. You alluded to Clemson a moment ago. I would like to take that path with Clemson and Georgia, two teams that had blemishes on their schedule. They somehow make the conference championship game. Georgia was down double digits, 27-13, late in the fourth quarter against Brent Key, Haynes King, and Georgia Tech. South Carolina and Clemson are going back and forth. South Carolina comes back and beats Clemson in that game and a non-conference game, both non-conferences, both ACC, SEC matchups. But now both Georgia and Clemson are playing in the conference championship game with a chance to go to the college football playoff, which seems hilarious to me because these are two teams we were picking apart the past couple of weeks. Yeah, no, it, it, it's remarkable. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it goes across the board, Matt. Uh yeah, how do you uh, how do you, how does Clemson lose? How do, how do, how do, but I, I think it's the nature of this game. I mean, I, I was in Tuscaloosa over the weekend and I watched Alabama. You know, look chaotic, but yeah. still win by but still win by two touchdowns in their biggest rivalry game. That was a week after they couldn't do anything. I I think there's so many elements to it. I had a head coach tell me this week, as you see them every week, you don't understand. It's it's free agency now, and, and yeah. these guys are they're not dialed in like uh, the normal player. Uh, they literally don't listen to anything we say, um, and, and I think you're you're seeing that in, in in living HD every every Saturday. Yeah. So where do you put? So look, I I believe if you're minus a three loss team, like I don't think because Clemson's in the conference championship game, they're automatically in the college football playoff. I think they're going to steal a bid if they beat SMU, and then the committee's got all hell breaking loose. But I believe Georgia's in. I believe uh, Texas is in. When you look at conference championship weekend as a whole now, what Texas did to Texas A&M last night was basically just let A&M back in the game. Texas is the better team. But when you look big picture at the conference championships, there's only going to be – I think SEC is going to get two teams. I think Penn State and Oregon are automatically in. There's only a one-bid stealer situation, and that's ACC. And I think the Big 12 is getting one team in. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, I, I mean, I I don't know. I, I mean, of all the reveals of this committee, this is by far the most important. Uh, last week was a was a baseline, but you know, where do they put Clemson, Miami, Alabama, South Carolina? I mean, I was yeah. I, I was I was in a, on a part of an interview yesterday with Shane Beamer. This was before the game, and uh, we know what he said after the game. Uh, <laughs> by the way. Who, Texas finally got a big win yesterday, not against A&M, but, they, but that Michigan game now really counts uh, yeah. as, a, as a quality yeah. win. So, I mean, it's so chaotic. Um, I, was, I was on a conversation before this one where, uh, you know, the Alabama, the, the, the Alabama debate started with, with, uh, with some, some school, the Miami, and, you know, my, Miami has good wins, but Alabama doesn't. I mean, Alabama beat Georgia. Uh, I mean, I, I yeah, but they also lost to Vanderbilt, a six loss team, and, and to Oklahoma, a six loss team. I mean, you know what, Matt? They're all flawed. I might hurt you.